Hey guys, welcome back to How to Make Elements from Household Materials, and today's element is going to be titanium. Now, titanium dioxide can be commonly bought at a pottery store or something um, as titanium dioxide, and it is used as a pottery pigment, and I got this particular stuff from a place called Surrey, which is in British Columbia. Um, it was a fair drive, but it was on the way to our destination where we were going, um, so we stopped in there and bought some. It was about $4 for 500 grams of it, and um, that's fairly cheap. Anyhow, if you're wondering what the place is called, it's called Green Barn Potter Supply. Anyhow, but any pottery shop should carry titanium dioxide because it's very useful as a pigment in pottery. Um, anyhow, it's also quite, titanium is quite a non-reactive metal, so the dioxide should be able to re be reduced with aluminum. So I came up with a ratio that I think should work about four parts titanium dioxide to three parts aluminum. And this is just aluminum powder, which we made in a separate video by grinding it up in a ball mill. So you could go check that out. Anyhow, so I just have a uh, blender here, which will help mix them really well. This is a blender dedicated dedicated strictly to science, as I mentioned in several different videos. But, um, so we'll go ahead, turn on our scale, zero it out, and, um, if we need three parts, um, aluminum powder to four parts this, let's do something like, um, 12 parts aluminum to 16 parts, um, or 12 grams of aluminum to 16 grams of titanium dioxide, just as a small test to see how that works. So, we'll go ahead and weigh out. 12 grams. There we go. So 12 grams of aluminum powder. And we're going to need, so we'll have a total of 28 grams. So we'll add in 16 of this. Let's get this to read 28 grams. Or 18 grams. 22 grams. Hmm. Clearly this stuff isn't very dense because we're sure adding a lot. 26, 27. Okay, we went a bit over 30 grams, but it shouldn't matter too, too much. So you can see we have 30 grams, so I'll go ahead. It's a bit foggy there. I'll go ahead, um, stick the top on this, and grind it up to make sure everything's really mixed quite well. And then I'll meet you outside. Okay, let's go see if this works. So here's 30 grams of titanium dioxide and aluminum thermite. We'll see if it works. I do have a magnesium ribbon to get it in initiated and we'll just light it with a small uh, propane torch. Well, I think it's going. Nothing super energetic, but it's clearly reacting. And it's reacting at a fairly good rate, I can see. Um, the reaction's almost finished now. The container is glowing very, very hot, as you can see. Wow. Okay, we'll go examine the re results and see what we got. I just wanted to point out how hot this is. I mean, like, look at that thing glowing. It's so incredibly hot. Like, yeah, that was a very intense reaction. Although not too much seemed to be happening, it was very hot. I really hope we got some globs of titanium metal. I'll wait for this to cool and then knock it apart. So, I smashed apart the remnants, and um, there were clearly some pieces of titanium metal, because I can see that they're reflective and shiny in the light, and they look rather metallic. It just didn't get hot enough to fuse everything together. Now, I could stick all this waste in my um, electrical arc furnace and melt it into a nice big blob of titanium metal. Um, however, that's not really viable for most people, as most people don't have an arc furnace. So I'm going to try to to get some sort of other reaction mixture in with it, um, which will ra be, react much, much hotter. And the hotter reaction mixture should help us along with um, making sure that all this titanium metal flows into one blob. I'm really hoping that'll be the case. So I'm going to go ahead and I'll meet you back inside and we'll figure out a new reaction mixture, which similarly uses titanium dioxide and aluminum, but uses some other agents um, to help induce more heat. So I'll meet you back when that's been done. Okay, so... This time, what I've done is I've taken approximately uh, 30 grams, uh, no, 20 grams of aluminum powder, 20 grams of um, uh, titanium dioxide, and about 20 grams of calcium sulfate, which uh, can be bought as plaster Paris, and mixed them all together really well. I'm hoping the reaction of the aluminum and the calcium sulfate will produce enough heat to melt all the titanium into a glob, but if all else fails, we'll just take what we got the first time and melt it with my arc furnace. So, um, I'll go ahead and light it now. 
very similar similarly to before I have a magnesium ribbon here we'll just get that there and it is on an insulating refractory brick so that hopefully it uh, melts a bit easier this time I'm not totally sure what's gonna happen uh the fuse is still burning but I'm pretty doubtful we'll see what happens There appears to be a minor reaction happening, but not too much is really happening. It's pretty slow. I probably got the ratios wrong because I just kind of threw everything together because I, yeah, I don't know, I was pretty doubtful that this would work and I thought I'd just have to use my furnace. Oh, whoa. But, um, well, it seems to have picked up a bit more now. Um, it's pretty slow, so I'll just let the reaction progress and, um, meet you back when I'm done with it and we'll see what we got. Well, that other result was even worse than before. There were only tiny little flecks of titanium metal, which aren't really even useful, and there's aluminum sulfide, which was produced, which when arc furnace will decompose into aluminum metal and sulfur dioxide and poison me. So, we don't want to do that, so I preferred the first reaction mixture with the simple titanium dioxide and aluminum, but I have one final reaction. I used the rest of my sulfur, which was approximately 15 grams of sulfur, I used 20 grams of aluminum powder, and 10 grams of titanium dioxide. So aluminum and sulfur react extremely violently and with a lot of heat to, pour, uh, to make aluminum sulfide. So I'm hoping that heat will just be enough to get us at least a glob of titanium metal. I don't even know. This is the final attempt before I pull out the arc for us. Yep, definitely much more reactive. It was just in a canning jar ring to try to contain it. That worked very well. I have high hopes about this. I'll let it cool down and we'll see what we got. So we did it. Um, that was the final attempt and it actually worked. You can see at the very tip of the pliers there, there's a little blob of titanium metal. Now, that was just the first piece I looked at at as soon as it was done reacting and it was glowing like white hot and the titanium was still molten when I pressed on it with these uh, pliers trying to hit it apart little beads of titanium came out so I'm very hopeful and I want to take apart the rest of these beads and see whatever we got but we definitely got titanium metal which means we won't have to use the arc furnace so clearly the perfect ratio to do this with is approximately 15 grams of sulfur and I showed how to get sulfur in a previous video you can buy it and then purify it from Home Depot as gardening sulfur um, so 15 grams of sulfur, 20 grams of aluminum powder, and 10 grams of um, titanium dioxide. And that will give you a very nice thermite composition, which can probably be improved because I just did it in a canning jar ring. Could probably create a better apparatus to get everything to flow together. As even about 10 seconds after, the titanium metal was still molten. And you know, so break this apart, see what we got, and then I'll meet you inside. Okay, so I spent probably about an hour sorting through all that. You can see we have some beautiful small little beads of titanium metal at the bottom. And they're not huge by any means, which makes me want to really arc furnace all this stuff. So I took all the remains of this, which I believe had the most titanium out of everything, and I'm just going to arc furnace these remains. So I'll go set up the arc furnace and um, melt everything down and see if we can get some bigger beads beside these little teeny ones. Although these are pure and we will use that as an element sample if we can't get bigger ones. And I just wanted to point out how cool this little bead is. Um, so it's kind of embedded in the slag, as you can see. And uh, if I could get it to focus, it doesn't like focusing. You can see that little blurry bead there. Um, it's quite cool. I, I, just, I think I'll just keep it and uh, not remove it out of here because it is quite a little pretty little bead of titanium. Anyhow, I'll go set up my arc furnace and we can start arc furnacing this stuff. I just wanted to quickly mention that upon heating, um, aluminum sulfide will decompose into aluminum and sulfur dioxide gas, which will go off and poison us. 
Now, um, the thermite reaction also produces sulfur dioxide gas because I added the sulfur in an excess to make sure all the aluminum reacted and none of it alloyed with our titanium. And um, then it, the, the leftover sulfur would uh, release sulfur dioxide gas as it combined with the oxygen. Anyhow, so upon arc furnacing, we should wear a gas mask or something so we do not breathe in the deadly sulfur dioxide gas and kill ourselves as it's very toxic and can cause serious health effects. And yeah, so like I said before, I'll go set up my arc furnace. Okay, so it's starting to get dark outside, but um, there's enough time that I think we should be able to arc furnace. So um, in that little blender there, I just have our um, leftover reactor mixture, which smells terrible, but I uh, ground it up into a really fine powder. Um, just I think that will help it melt. Now, t titanium melts at um, just over 1,600 degrees Celsius, so you can't use a blowtorch. It must be something like an electrical arc furnace, which is very, very hot. Um, anyhow, so I'll go ahead, pour it out on there, and arc furnace it until hopefully most of it's molten, and hope that we get a little blob of titanium at the bottom. The um, slag, which is primarily aluminum oxide, um, should um, hopefully protect the titanium from oxidation, so we'll get a nice little bead that's uh, rather shiny. And um, the aluminum sulfide, which was produced in the reaction, will decompose into sulfur. Well, decompose into sulfur and aluminum, and the sulfur will react with the air, forming sulfur dioxide, which is very toxic. So I'm going to be wearing um, a gas mask, um, which is good for sulfur dioxide. I will be wearing a welding mask, of course, and gloves, um, which leather gloves, and inside will be rubber. Anyhow, so I'll go ahead, get everything set up, and. Um, I guess we'll go ahead and arc furnace. It's extremely important you wear a gas mask because in my silicon video on how to extract silicon uh, from um, silicon dioxide, dioxide, I um, did a very similar reaction um, where I decomposed aluminum sulfide and produced sulfur dioxide gas, and it really hurt when I breathed it in. And I almost, well, yeah, went to my sister and her friend and hurt their lungs also. So it's very important you have a gas mask if you are going to do this. Anyhow, so I'll go get ahead and get everything set up. Okay, let's go ahead and do this. I got all my safety gear on. Well, we'll see what that did. Okay, so um, after arc furnacing it, we made two interesting things. So one, I don't know if you can see any shiny little reflective pieces in this, but uh, this is part of the slag that we melted. Now, there, it's really difficult to see in my room lighting. It's not exactly the best, but there is titanium in here. Um, I can see teeny little pieces of it. Um, so what I did was I chopped it open and... Um, um, tried to extract that little titanium layer, and uh, that's what I did the second time when I melted it on that little corner. We came up with a nice little bead of titanium. If we could get that to properly focus, it doesn't seem to want to really focus very well. Um, but, yeah, you can see the beautiful little bead of titanium there. So that's definitely what I'll use for my element collection. Now, I am quite sad that we didn't get any large amount of titanium metal, but um, perhaps something like uh, even more violent reaction, which generates more heat during the thermite reaction to help aid the titanium reaction, perhaps that would do better. Something like potassium chlorate and aluminum powder, which is essentially flash powder, um, that's extremely hot and goes off in an instant. So that mixed with uh, titanium dioxide and the aluminum mixture, I, I believe that would generate enough heat to get some large titanium globs. I'm not totally sure, but I think it would. So, um... Perhaps in a future video I'll revisit uh, this once I make some potassium chlorate. We can try some more interesting things. Anyhow, hope you guys enjoyed. So, uh, see you in a future video. Wait, bye.